my discussion today would, would mainly focus on uh, the peritoneal transport, which will include transport of both solutes and ultrafiltration. Uh, we'll discuss about various kinds of uh, uh, dialysis fluid, including dextrose-based and icodextrin. Uh, we'll discuss uh, briefly the adequacy of peritoneal dialysis and how it applies to the clinical practice. And we will uh, be also be discussing the approach to volume management in peritoneal dialysis, especially those patients who are uh, classified as high transporters, uh, where you can see uh, volume man management could be problematic. Mostly we use a dialysate to plasma creatinine ratio to attribute certain character to the peritoneal membrane. I'll going through three to four ca clinical cases. And as I present those cases, uh, I'll, I'll go over the clinical uh, aspects of uh, their uh, care and various aspects associated with peritoneal dialysis. Uh, our first patient is a 67-year-old woman with type 2 diabetes mellitus who starts on peritoneal dialysis. Two months later, she had a PET test done, which shows deep pure creatinine at four hours is 0.9 which characterize her as a high transporter. Now, which of the following statements about D over P of creatinine is true? P creatinine is an important predictor of dialysis. C, there may be problems with ultrafiltration, especially during uh, the long 12 of, of dialysate. D, icodextrin is not useful for this high or rapid transport. The, all the transport, regulation of transport, occurs at the endothelial levels. There are three different kinds of pores which exist in this lining. The second mechanism through which solute transport as well, uh, that is convection, uh, which is assisted by the ultrafiltration of fluid from um, blood compartment to peritoneal ca cavity. During peritoneal dialysis takes place through osmosis. Uh, Dialysate, mostly used in clinical practice, is a dextrose-based dialysate, which is a high concentration of glucose compared to concentration of glucose in the plasma. So uh, 347 milliosmol per liter for 1.5%. 2.5% dextrose has osmolality of 397 milliosmol per liter, where 4.25% dextrose has osmolality of 485. Uh, milliosmo. This is how the ultrafiltration, ultra, ultrafiltration takes place in peritoneal dialysis. As you can see in the blood compartment, not only water is moving uh, in peritoneal dialysis, but uh, during this process, the creatinine will move from blood compartment to peritoneal cavity, and the glucose will move from peritoneal cavity to the blood compartment. It comes around at roughly about four to five hours. So, so the amount of uh, the duration of uh, dialysis uh, dwell should be uh, customized uh, to uh, the transport character of an individual, you are expected to see about one liter ultrafiltration in four hours. And the amount of ultrafiltration which is seen in two hours, four hours, and eight hours, and 14 hours is outlined. As you can see with 1.5% dynial, what we do is we obtain um, a sample of plasma at the baseline. And, and the ratio of these substances at four hour is uh, drawn. The slower glucose will diffuse out of peritoneal cavity and osmotic gradient between the peritoneal cavity and blood compartment will be maintained longer. And they will maintain their ability for ultrafiltration for longer period of time. Where slow transporters will remove more slow, uh, would, would remove solutes from blood both with uh, diffusion as well as uh, convection. And the total removal of solutes in the slow transporter, and that was the point of the discussion. The ne ne next case is a 42-year-old woman with IG nephropathy, then the small pore, which are intercellular pores, and the fluid removal through small pores as well as large pores. So the water which is being removed uh, is hypoosmotic compared to plasma, and sodium is being held back or so, sodium is being sieved. So <clears throat> icodextrin is the next which I'll discuss briefly. Typically in, uh, in high transporters, where we're having issues with ultrafiltration. He starts uh, 
automated peritoneal dialysis with two liters, three exchanges over eight hours at night and loss fill of two liters. A, he's protected from excess cellular volume overload in part by residual uh, urine volume. The strength of peritoneal dialysis is, uh, depends on uh, the longer preservation of residual renal function in peritoneal dialysis. Its ability to clear middle molecule more effectively as opposed to uh, hemodialysis. Now, the, the, the control arm on an average, their KT over V was somewhere around 1.3, 1.4. It is a good idea to treat our end stage kidney disease patient on peritoneal dialysis as our CKD three or stage four patient and preserve the kidney function. <clears throat> so certainly uh, ultrafiltration failure of peritoneal membrane is one of the reasons for uh, loss of peritoneal membrane to remove enough fluid. And uh, typical membrane failures uh, defined as our need to use more than 4.25% exchanges over uh, every day for maintaining uvolemia. And a test which is done uh, to uh, document ultrafiltration failure that will define ultrafiltration failure. There's rapid dissipation of osmotic gradient and the, the, a poor ultrafiltration. And how, how, you, how you manage these individuals, just uh, uh, do the best with salt and water uh, restriction, uh, use loop diuretics. And as you can see on, the, on, the, on this graph, uh, on, the, on the Y axis, you have ultrafiltration. On the X axis uh, is the time. The light blue curve is icodextrin. With the icodextrin exchange, uh, I think we can do a midday exchange with hypertonic uh, dynio. So leaks can also be an indication of volume. It's just typically drained in two, three to four hours. Rapid transporter has increased peritoneal vascularity, uh, which can be characterized by PET test and, and transports small uh, salutes quickly, but loses glucose. This was an excellent, excellent presentation covered all the, the required pharmacokinetics and, you know, just started from the basics and it's going on to its practical abilities. So I'll just sort of touch upon a few points that, you know, how are we doing things in Pakistan as opposed to what your presentation was all like? What sort of, you know, surface area are you looking for that patient? So if we know those dynamics, only then we can come up with a proper prescription. We can achieve very, very good ultrafiltration in these patients who are already on PD. Um, we saw that a lot in Pakistan, especially in the COVID times, when we did shift patients on to peritoneal dialysis because they just didn't want to go to the center. So, so yeah, uh, so, so that was an excellent presentation. So, yeah, so, so an excellent, excellent talk, sir. And uh, how, how do you see this going forward? But, but obviously there are difficulties.